Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a Jeskai Super Friends deck and it features one of my favorite cards in standard, Urza Assembles the Titans. This is one of the better payoffs for playing a lot of Planeswalkers as our saga starts out from chapter 1 typically, although we can read ahead to chapter 2 or 3 if that aligns up better. And then if we start from chapter 1 we get to scry 4, reveal the top card if we want to, and if it's a Planeswalker card we can put it in hand, so that can provide a bit of value, but uh, scry 4 is also useful if if we are digging for a specific answer, like maybe a sweeper, or if we need enchantment removal, then on chapter 2 we can put a planeswalker in play with mana value 6 or less from our hand for free, and we don't have any 7 mana chaos in this deck that make this a little awkward, so we can just uh, put anything in play. And then uh, finally on chapter 3 we get to activate our planeswalkers twice instead of just once this turn, so that can also provide a lot of value and make it a lot easier to ultimate our planeswalkers as well. And then uh, taking a look at our Planeswalker selection, we've got two of each, including the Wandering Emperor, great against creature decks, but can also build up some Samurai to eventually close out the game. We've got a Jace, can be a win condition in slower matchups where the opponents draw a lot of cards, and then we can try to mill the opponent to death, but it's also good to control creatures, make the opponent overextend into our sweepers, or eventually draw a few cards. Then we've got Teferi who slows the sunset, pretty nice with our ramp artifacts like Iron Crag and the Celestus, as we can untap them alongside a land to essentially give us two extra mana that turn, and then it can also use the minus two to dig for more action, or just uh, build up the loyalty to set up the minus seven emblem, which is also pretty fun. And then at 5 mana we've got Teferi Temporal Pilgrim, which can also draw a lot of cards or build up a large spirit token that grows whenever we draw a card, and the loyalty will also increase whenever we draw a card. And then there's Quintorius, which can make 3-2 spirit tokens, or we can Discover, which also triggers the passive ability to drain the opponent for 2 and gain 2. And then the minus 6 ultimate is also quite achievable, and that can give all our cards in Graveyard a second lease on life, so filling up the Graveyard for a Quintorius ultimate can also be very effective. And then at 6 mana there's the Eternal Wanderer, which gives us kind of a pseudo sweeper with a minus 4, and can make double striking samurai. Don't have too much synergy with a plus 1 in this deck, but can also be an answer to opposing two tokens. And then there's Chandra Hope's Beacon. We don't have as many instants and sorceries as I would like for Chandra, but it is still pretty good. We've got some two mana interaction that we can cast after playing Chandra by using the mana ability, the plus two, and then the plus one can maybe dig for specific answers or additional card advantage, but the minus X can also be quite powerful in the right circumstance. And then looking at kind of our support cards that we need to make this archetype work, we of course need some interaction, and Lightning Helix is a big reason why this deck is now possible, as we can deal some damage while gaining life to stay alive against aggro, and then a Get Lost also versatile answer that can hit creatures, enchantments, and planeswalkers alike. Then I'm also a fan of Experimental Augury, we can use it early to smooth out our draws, but later in the game by proliferating, not only can we proliferate the loyalty counters on our planeswalkers to make it easier to ultimate, but we can also proliferate the lore counter on Urza Assembles the Titans, so we can maybe play it and essentially get two chapters worth of value in one turn, which can also be quite powerful. And then we've got some mana acceleration at two mana with Iron Crank, which can maybe cast a four mana Planeswalker on turn three, or Urza Assembles on turn four. Now of course it is a little awkward with our own temporary lockdown, so that's a bit of a nombo, but lockdown very useful against the various aggro decks in the format, like Boros Convoke, which makes a lot of cheap permanents. And then at three mana we've got some more mana acceleration with Staff of Completion, which will cost us a bit of life, but can also draw cards or proliferate, so that's another way to synergize with Urza Assembles and our Planeswalkers and then the Celestus can also give us more life gain and card selection as it switches between day and night and then some one-offs like Big Score, which is very synergistic with Chandra, but can also just ramp out some of our expensive Planeswalkers by making treasures, and then the ill-timed Explosion, another sweeper to deal with maybe larger creatures if we can discard an expensive enough card, but can also just be a draw to in the control matchups. So there's a lot of ways you can build Jeskai Super Friends in Standard, you could also play different colors altogether, maybe go Esper, since there's a lot of powerful black Planeswalkers in Standard, but we're trying Jeskai today. And then the mana base also got a few new tools with the latest expansion. I'm a fan of the surveil lands in this deck since they can kind of smooth out our draws, find the missing pieces in certain matchups, and uh, we aren't casting any one drops, so playing these stacked on turn one is perfect. So two copies of Parlor, one Thundering Falls, and two Archives. Playing this even over the blue-white creature land, which you might see in a more traditional Jeskai control deck otherwise. 
And then we've got a mix of other dual lands, the pain lands, so we can cast our two drops on curve, otherwise all other lands might enter tapped. And uh, then of course the Innistrad duels that enter untapped later in the game, which is also perfect for a more controlling deck. And then the Soaring City and Igunjo for a tiny bit more interaction. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and what do we think of our hand? Got double lockdown, so we're good against aggro. And then we want to surveil into more lanes, basically. I'll try it. Iron Crag does get exiled by lockdown, so it's not ideal. A land would be better. And we may be up against Mono Red. Alright, no land so far. Iron Crag would have been good alongside Teferi. As a mana artifact, we can untap. Teferi can also gain us some life against aggro. And then we'll have to decide whether to get lost a potential haste creature or wait for temporary lockdown. Probably want to save get lost to answer a 3 drop like Godric. For now, a picnic runer, okay. Take our turn, and we get to surveil. Alright, if our opponent moves all in with a uh, pump spell, we can get lost. Celestus is probably worth keeping. It's not as good as a land would be, but it is good with Teferi again. And at least it's a mana source. Ain't he? Okay. So if they attack with a runer... We can get lost, alright. Monstrous Rage, I guess we'll uh, get lost. I guess we can let them use Inti's ability if they want. Maybe discard an extra card. They don't. Don't want to take 10 damage. And then Lockdown deals with both Inti and the map tokens. Seems worth for now. Opponent Disguises. This is probably the 2 1 Haste Prowess that can draw additional cards. Play Celestis for now. Even though Lockdown would get rid of the face down card since mana value is 0. Wanna just get up to 4 mana here. And currently they have 2 instances and sorcery, so they could flip this face up now for 4 mana and draw 3, but also requires discarding their hand. Alright, Monstrous Rage first makes sense, and then it can still transform. So there's the Codebreaker. And a Kumano. So we are taking six. Opponent still has two cards left. But another Lockdown looks good. And we could even play Teferi if we use Celestis properly. And then untap. Land Celestis cast Lockdown. Alright, so we're back up to 12. Got another Sweeper in hand. And Eternal Wanderer to try and take over. Alright, another Code Breaker can string together more spells here. So that's pretty good. They can activate this at instant speed as well. Currently three instants and sorceries in the graveyard, so it's going to take up all their mana. And our opponent goes for it right away, so they can attack the fairy. Alright, Codebreaker just going face here. So... Could just uh, gain some life, make some extra mana, play Eternal Wanderer, make a double striker, which may not survive a burn spell, but at least it's something they need to deal with versus big score, dig towards other interaction, like a Lightning Helix would be pretty good. And then discard an Eternal Wonder. Don't think we want an ill-timed explosion yet, so... Yeah, I guess we'll take the Eternal Wonder for now. At 12 we should be relatively safe to survive. And I would like to gain life here if possible. So, 
opponent might have a burn spell to take out our samurai, maybe a pump spell to finish off one of my planeswalkers. Next turn we're likely going for the ill-timed explosion. We've seen a few pump spells that also increase toughness by one, so they might be able to uh, take out our samurai, but with double strike we might still trade at the very least. So opponent's having trouble deciding, goes face in the end. Definitely blocking, may as well block the codebreaker. And then if they have to spend some resources keeping their creatures alive, we're okay with it. It's gonna be your rage on the swift spear. And another one. Alright, so we take seven down to five. And another lockdown. Alright, so make another token. Can maybe big score first, discarding Wanderer, and then still explosion or lockdown if needed. Quintorius. Okay, that can also gain some life back. So maybe we don't even deal with the Swiss Spear, even though it's a little risky in the face of more pump spells. Play Quintorius. Teferi can also ultimate next turn. Found the Wandering Emperor. That's a nice answer to the Swiss Spear. And yeah, this should be game over pretty much. And a double strike samurai. So we're at 11, opponent's top decking, they need to string together more code breakers to have a chance. And Elaine's not gonna do it. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, our hand's a little slow to get going, but we do have Explosion to maybe catch back up against Aggro. On turn 4 it might be too slow, but uh, we'll give it a shot. Facing turn on Mountain. No creature, and we get to surveil, look for some cheaper interaction. A ramp card would also be fine. A surveil land, hmm. I guess that can maybe dig towards, like, a turn 3 lockdown. Lightning Helix would still be good enough, or I can just get rid of it, and then get there with what we currently have. Yeah, I guess we'll uh, get rid of it here. Don't need more lands, necessarily. Even though Archive could be an upgrade over Hadarkar Wastes. And then I'll just play Sundown Pass, as opposed to keep up uh, appearances, represent a counter spell could also be valid here. But if we do top deck lockdown, I don't want to take damage unnecessarily against Monored. And if we're being honest, it's not like Monored's gonna play around too much. Alright, never mind. Pwnum maybe a red-white burn deck with Pia, maybe more focused on those exile synergies and various planeswalkers. So now we have a bit more time to set up, so I'm liking my hand a lot more. Hoping they present more creatures for this explosion next turn. Otherwise we could play Teferi, although it's unlikely to stick around for long, as I'm sure opponent's holding some burn spells or other removal. Yeah, the plan is to set up this Urza assembles and get value out of as many planeswalkers as possible, so I want to keep them alive, ideally. So we could start with Ill-Timed Explosion, deal with Pia, or Teferi plus, but then a Lightning Helix plus an attack is still gonna take it out. Alright, so I can discard Teferi to take out Pia essentially, or I can just leave it in play. But uh, Pia could be kinda scary in the long term. So, want to get rid of our weakest Planeswalker, and then... Don't mind one Surveil land since we have a bunch of 5 drops. So Battlefield Forge can go have enough red mana as is. So we'll clean things up. And we'll see if they have anything end of turn. At least they don't have double white for a Wandering Emperor. A big score is a good one. So they could maybe ramp up all the way to a Chandra. Which we currently don't have a great answer to. Never mind, widespread thieving. So they're gonna try and use the treasures to set up some sort of combo here, maybe cheat something expensive into play. 
I'm intrigued. We're just gonna Urza assemble here, I think. And then start from chapter one to give us more time to deploy all those planeswalkers. Since we're not under too much pressure. And then how about another Urza assembles, or do we just get rid of all four cards and hope to find one on top? Close call. We already have three in hand, so we probably shouldn't be too greedy. Alright, let's just keep Urza Assembles on top. And then we can decline to reveal. So next turn we can put something in play for free. And maybe Urza Assembles again. So we can certainly play the value game. Question is, can our opponent go over the top and kind of ignore our Planeswalker synergies? Possible they have a get lost to destroy my enchantment, in which case it's good to have a backup. And yep, there it is. Okay, so... Do we parlor before or after playing Urza Assembles? I guess parlor gives us a slightly better chance of keeping a Planeswalker on top, so we'll play it first. And don't need land. And again, I'll start from chapter one, try and get as much value as possible. And now we found Chandra. Could also keep a Wandering Emperor afterwards, although they don't appear to be a very aggressive deck, so I don't know how good it's actually going to be. Of course, can still make Samurai, but it's a pretty slow win condition. So I'll just go for Chandra. And reveal. Alright, so we've got a nice collection of Planeswalkers in hand. Just need to deploy them now. Our opponent still needs an extra color to enable the thieving. And Lightning Helix makes a treasure, so now they can enable it. And what do they get? Arcane Bombardments, fair enough. So we need to find Get Lost to answer it, basically. We'll put Chandra in play, since that saves us the most mana. And then we have options. I can dig using the plus one ability, hope to find... basically get lost. Big score would also be pretty effective here. Or we can add mana, and then deploy several planeswalkers in one turn. And I guess Quintorius, if we discover, has a chance of hitting a get lost, but of course chances aren't very high. Yeah, close call. This bombardment is going to be pretty scary with Get Lost in the Graveyard and Burn Spells aplenty. So I guess keeping our loyalty high is maybe better as opposed to minusing. So maybe we'll do that. Just uh, play the fairy, draw a card, and then see what we hit, and then maybe play Quintorius as well. Ooh, nice big score. So now we want a big score, kind of pivots with uh, Chandra. Yeah, I guess we would have been a mana short of casting Quintorius, but we would have been able to play Emperor still. So yeah, now we'll big score, ditch the lockdown, get to draw four cards, make four treasures, and the fairy gets a bit more loyalty as well. All right, did not get the get lost, but uh, can still flash in an Emperor if needed. And then we'll see if we get to untap and uh, activate a bunch of our Planeswalkers in one turn. This is five mana. Maybe a burn down the house. Yep, that can target our Planeswalkers. So that could hurt. And they exiled play with fire for another two damage. So they can finish off Chandra. At least we'll still have to ferry. But yeah, Chandra was definitely doing a lot of work for us. So I don't think we play Emperor, so I can instead just play 5 and 6 mana Planeswalkers. Milling the opponent with Jace, I guess could be a win condition. But uh, we'll need to find the other Jace for that to really work. So step 1 could also work up the loyalty on Quintorius. But yeah, at this point... They're going to hit some juicy spells with Arcane Bombardment. 
So maybe I should just try and dig for that to get lost as much as possible. So the fairy draws. Finds another Urza assembles. Okay. Can Jace can also draw a few cards. Urza assembles can maybe put a Planeswalker in play. Start from chapter two. Go for Eternal Wanderer. Can make a pair of Samurai. And then maybe I should mill the opponents so they're less likely to get Burnout House back with their Arcane Bombardments. Yeah, I guess we'll draw first here. Find an Iron Crag. Play Jace. Mill the opponent's draw card. And we did find another Jace. And a lockdown. Alright. So now we'll just uh, make some Samurai. And pass it back. So now they're a lot less likely to hit Burn Out the House, which was our objective. Big scores are good starts. Hits. Play with fire. Can finish off Jace, take out a token. We're still digging towards the Get Lost to deal with this enchantment. So yeah, the Widespread Thieving did a lot of work. Boone's got three cards in hand still. And they can maybe trigger Bombardment again in our turn with an instant. It's going to be a Get Lost on Teferi. Yeah, that's uh, too bad. And a Burnout House now exiled with Bombardment, so it's going to be impossible to keep our Planeswalkers around. And it's not going to take long for our Bombardment to burn us to death. And at this point, Play With Fire is going face. They're not even targeting the Samurai, which is just going to get swept up anyway. So I can't save it with the Wandering Emperor. And Teferi get lost. Alright, so final chapter of this Urza assembles. Opponent has 34 cards remaining. I can plus Jace up to 6 loyalty and then mill for 18, basically. So that's not enough to mill them out. So I guess we need to just play Quintorius. Minus, hope to hit a get lost. Uh, Celestis can also maybe activate and give us a redraw. I'm gonna minus first, just in case they have another get lost in hand, I guess. Uh, although if they have a burn spell, they can take out Quintorius before I plus and make a spirit, but I don't think that matters. Hit an Iron Crag, not ideal. So now we can plus. And I think we're just gonna play Jace to draw now. Can activate it twice. Can surveil to give us a slightly better chance at drawing. Into a get lost could also sack a map token, although we give them the opportunity to burn Jace in response, which they do. Well, at least they have one fewer card to enable bombardment next turn. Beach wasn't going to do it. So yeah, now what? Can just explore a bunch with the map tokens, just to try and find an answer next turn. Although that might already be too late.
there it is. Well, we found it, but is it too little too late? We also don't have much left to actually close out the game with now. So two cards in hand. Bombardment's got double play with fire and burn down in exile. So they can answer whatever's in play. Possible they drew another bombardment in the meantime. Yeah, that's a lot of dead planeswalkers right there. Sunfall to wipe the board, okay. And they hit Lightning Helix, so that's, let's see, 7 plus 3 is 10. They can put us to 1 if they make a pair of uh, Devils. Although, never mind, I guess a Sunfall would wipe those away. But I guess they just uh, want a bigger artifact token. And if they have another instant they can cast in my turn, I guess I would do it. So it doubles down. And do we get to untap? Lockdown can answer the artifact token. So yeah, let's uh, get lost, give them those tokens first. And then Lockdown can answer them. And then I should use my treasure while I can. So at 4 life, we might finally start to turn the corner here. Play Celestis, and then Emperor we can play at instant speed. Suppose I could have played Iron Crag as well, but probably happy to discard it to a Celestis at this point. So do they have another bombardment to rebuild? It's not going to be devastating like the first one right away. Opponent has 29 cards left, but without a Jace left in the deck, I don't think we're going to mill them out. Another burn down the house, making Devils, so they are going for the burn plan here. And they're all going face. All right, so I think we're going to gain life with the Wandering Emperor here. By exiling a Devil, it's also not going to trigger. And then we'll see if they finish off my Spirit, or if they finish off Wandering Emperor. And going for Emperor would make sense. Okay. Get to untap, start by activating Celestis. And another get lost in case they present another bombardment is good. Quintorius makes another spirits. And we'll attack. Hidden Volcano is gonna discover. And hits big score, that's a good one. We'll give them the mana to potentially cast another expensive spell now that they sack the land. If we can get to an ultimate on Quintorius, I guess we can still mill them out with Jace. So that's our plan now. Although keeping it alive is going to be a struggle. Alright, opponent destroys our tamped creature. Triggers thieving. The split cards here also pretty synergistic. And not many creatures to pull back from the graveyard, otherwise that could have been pretty effective. I will block. And they can choose to finish off our spirits or deal one to Quintorius, maybe finish it off with a burn spell. Get to untap. Activate Celestis. And a backup Quintorius is good to have. I guess I should check my library size, 20 cards left. And we can keep a land in hand, in case we need to discard it. Another widespread thieving. They already have two treasures, so it's not too difficult to enable it. Could also hit it with Get Lost before they cast their spell for free. I think I hang on to it for now, keep it for bombardments. 
Ooh, augury. That can proliferate, so we're getting close to an ultimate. Let's see if we can uh, maybe draw into another Planeswalker first. We can, Teferi. Now I'm lacking the token, since that can also proliferate. Although I guess we need to wait for it to get a counter. I guess we'll just hang on to the augury for a turn. And hope they don't have another burn down the house. I'll accept Sunfall, because then we can still maybe ultimate Quintorius. Right, Lightning Helix. So they're about to make two treasures. And then enable the thieving. So maybe I should just get lost it now. In case they hit something spicy with Hideaway. I guess we'll never find out what the phase down card is here. Ooh, never mind. I guess they can still cast the Bombardment. I guess that's how that works, since they were able to sank the treasures in response. But uh, yeah, we should be able to mill them out now with Augury proliferating. Find another Augury. Minus six. And we'll just exile our entire graveyard to make as much red mana as possible. And then we just need some blue mana to uh, cast double Jace. So I guess I lied when I said we didn't have access to Jace anymore. Quintorius to the rescue. I'm sure there's other things we could do here as well to end the game. Urza assembles plus replaying some Planeswalkers is also pretty effective. All right, we've got all the red mana we would ever need. But we're just here for Jace. And our opponent scoops it up. All right, this was quite the grind, but we got there in the end. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, we've got a fine hand. Wouldn't be able to Helix on two unless we draw an untapped land, but I'll still start with a Sundown Pass, which makes it more likely. And then Celesta sets up turn four, assembles, hopefully. Could play Jace on three, but probably gonna wait to play it at full capacity. Okay, turn one Warden, could be a red-white Convoke, so this temporary lockdown is a good draw. We'll see if we can wait a turn on lockdown, play Celestis first, or if we need to go for it right away, if they have a good start here. But looks like no turn to Goblin tokens at least. So I think we can wait on lockdown, just play Celestis. And then Augury also pretty nice with our Saga, since we can proliferate the uh, lore counter. So we'll see what's next. Ideally they play more cheap stuff that we can lock down. Demolition my Celestis. Not a play you see very often, but actually pretty effective here. Okay, fair enough. Would have loved to see Demolition on their own blood token. Maybe they still go for it at some point. But uh, yeah, if they're afraid of like a 5 mana Sunfall, then destroying the ramp card can maybe slow that down by a few turns. Either way, Lockdown's looking pretty good here. Exile their entire board. And we hit our land drop as well, so just looking for land 5. I Gunja will do. And then depending on the board state, we'll start from chapter 1 to get a bit more value, or we can chapter 2 put in J, shrink a creature down right away. And we'll see how our opponent rebuilds main phase reinforcements to activate Warden. Going for Lightning Helix before this gets too big is also reasonable. And then I could still play Jace, shrink down a token, if they play a Recruiter. They can still finish off Jace. Close call. If our opponent does have a Recruiter in hand, they would probably play it as opposed to tap more stuff to the Warden. If they have more token makers, then I guess we can also just dig for another Sweeper with Urza Assembles. So let's go big. And 
and no sweeper, but a wandering emperor could be all right. Opponent will know about it. Do I need a land afterwards? Would allow me to play Jace and a two mana spell. So I guess untap land is fine. All right, we got our value. And our opponent, of course, can play around Emperor by not tapping Warden or giving it Vigilance first. But there's a Recruiter, as we suspected. So they can get in for a healthy amount, but we will be able to gain some life back as well. So put an Emperor. Exile. Warden, I want to say. Play Jace. Now, interestingly, if we had an extra blue, we could have also cast Augury and a fully powered Jace. Proliferate Urza assembles the Titans to activate our Planeswalkers again. But I think we'll be fine just with a Helix here and then wait a turn. And then... Yeah, I guess we'll shrink down the Recruiter since that's the least suspicious. Even though we would prefer to Helix a Recruiter as opposed to a 1 1. And now they only send one token at our Wandering Emperor. We can save it. Opponent had another Recruiter after all. So we'll see where they go. They can deal 7 total, not quite lethal. So they probably try and finish off some Planeswalkers. Looks like our opponent is just going face. Now, the Wandering Emperor is not going to be amazing next turn unless we, I guess, used Augury. Because, yeah, we have to plus before we can minus. So that first plus ability doesn't really do much since we don't have a creature in play. So maybe I let the Wandering Emperor go and save ourselves more damage by taking out Recruiter. I think that's safer. Yeah, I guess we could also Augury first, increase loyalty, and then we can make a Samurai and also put a plus one counter on it. Still not that exciting. Quintorius is looking a lot better. And then we can make a pair of tokens. Jace can shrink their creatures down. And then next turn we could ultimate Quintorius pretty easily. That looks good. So I guess in hindsight, after top decking Quintorius, it would have been nice to keep our Wandering Emperor around. Might be time for them to convoke Knight Errant, War Leader's Call, pumping the team. Still not that scary. And then I want to proliferate before we use Quintorius. And then um, we can keep him around. So what kinds of colored mana do we need? Probably no red, since we'll get a lot of red from Quintorius. And find an Urza Assembles, which I'll also be able to cast here. But we can also cast one from the graveyard. Okay, so five red mana floating, can play Celestus maybe for starters, giving us other colored mana. Uh, Jace wants to probably just shrink stuff down. So we have no shortage of options. Yeah, maybe we want to Urza Assembles again. And then start from chapter 3 so I can activate the Planeswalkers on the battlefield again. So this can make another token. Can still play Celestus and then Lightning Helix. That seems good. Or we can play Wandering Emperor, make a bunch of Samurai. All good options. And Jace can also plus. Okay, not a bad turn. Could consider an attack with our tokens. Yeah, why not? Opponent's at 11, so we're not too far from uh, closing it out. And our opponent scoops it up. Next turn we could also mill them for a whole bunch with Jace. 
but most likely win with damage. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, this hand's a little iffy without white mana, we can't cast much. So I'll take a Mulligan, this is better. And then... Don't know what we're up against, but maybe it's better to keep the Lightning Helix and Celestus over Iron Crag. And then uh, play this one tapped for now. Against Mono Reds, happy to have a Lightning Helix available. It's a tricky question whether or not to cast it now, or wait for maybe a 2-drop to take out. If they have two 1 mana instants, they can uh, potentially save this with Spear. They're just going for 1 damage. Alright, in that case, do we just Helix now? I think now I'll just wait to maybe take out a 3-drop instead. Point was maybe playing around a counter spell and uh, play Sundown Pass to save ourselves one damage. All right, Lightning Strike, end of turn. So we could take out Swiss Spear, but let's see if they have a Godric or a Squee that we want to take out instead. So a bit of a strange sequence here, but Potent's being patient. We'll be patient as well. And then now I don't mind the Helix. And then we can untap Jace, although Jace is better with a creature on the battlefield still. So maybe we just play Jace, shrink down Swiss Spear, see what they play, which we can likely Helix next turn, as our opponent seems to be playing around a counter spell more than anything else. Could have also gone Celestus, keep up our two-man interaction, but want to get something going here. And if they're gonna burn Jace, we're pretty happy. Another Lightning Strike, okay. So that saves us 6 damage. They appear to be light on creatures. And Urza Assembles is looking good, so now Celestus can set that up. And an adversary that's gonna get back a lightning strike. So we wanna just helix that one for now. They can still get back lightning strike. We're at 12. And now we have a bunch of options with our Urza Assembles. Could also still play Jace, keep up Get Lost, which I don't hate. And then next turn we can Urza Assembles while Jace can kind of control their creatures a bit better. And then Urza Assembles can start from Chapter 1 instead of having to start from Chapter 2 to put a Jace in play. Two cards left in hand, another adversary, yeah, that kind of explains why they had such a passive start. We'll wait on the get lost in case they have another pump spell or some other instant they want to cast. Also, the map tokens are pretty good for Monorad to let them explore. Both go at Jace. So we'll get lost adversary. And they can explore. But now Jace can shrink down Swiss Spear again. Godric is kind of scary. Alright, so that's gonna be a good top deck for them. I think we still want to Urza Assembles look for another Planeswalker. And then uh, take it from there. I guess we could also mill the opponent with Jace so they don't draw Godric. Does mean giving up Jace, but that may be worth it. Alright, so Teferi we definitely want, and then Lockdown could be an answer to Swiss Spear, plus maybe some other haste creature, so it's not a bad follow-up. Yeah, let's just mill Godric since I don't want to deal with it. No 
Okay. So Jay's down. Opponent's channel in Crucible also gets answered by lockdown, so we don't mind. Another Swiss Spear on top. Retreat. So we get a free Teferi. Still wanna loot here. And a Helix is not bad. Teferi can draw. Running from battles, I might not win. Finding another Teferi. Alright, so we can play this one. Can untap Celestus as well. And we'll still keep up Lightning Helix while gaining us some life. Alright, so that was an awesome turn for us. Still want to loot in case we can improve our draw. This one's close, but uh, I guess our opponent has seen enough, just too much value from our Urza ensembles. Next turn we get to activate our Teferis a bunch, and maybe even work up towards an ultimate. Awesome! So yeah, we got to see this uh, Just Guy Super Friends deck in action, and it seems to have the tools to survive aggro, while also being able to beat kind of these more mid-rangey and controlling decks by providing a lot of value with our Planeswalkers. So it seems like a pretty well-positioned deck in the current best of one meta, and there's always a lot of room to kind of tinker with the numbers, maybe add a bit more interaction, add more Planeswalkers. There's other Planeswalkers that I didn't include, although most of them aren't super synergistic, thinking of cards like Sahili, which may work okay with some of our ramp artifacts, but in general is a bit lackluster. But uh, yeah, still a very fun archetype, and yeah, we gotta make use of this archetype while we can, because nowadays they're only printing a single Planeswalker per expansion, so it's going to be a lot harder to build Super Friends decks in the future. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!